they took out the Panthers. They took out. They Pac. neutralized the nation in Islam. They, you could say Pac, right? Like they, they just neutral. They know yes. how to neutralize certain things. You look at MLK, Malcolm X, uh, Kennedy. They know how to neutralize it because if you be become like what they perceive to be a threat to the republic, it's not going to happen. So Trump is that. Like the stuff he's trying to do is is just is is foundational pieces of racism. America don't America can't afford to go back there because it's going to be a civil war. You familiar? You heard uh, what the, the some of the points of uh, Project Twenty Twenty Five? Yeah. Nah, What's your thought? Familiar. All right, so Look that up, bro. Let, let me pull it up because we got to make sure we we speaking from a position of of strength. Yeah. All right. So I know they want to get rid of the uh, Department of Education. They overhaul. They want to overhaul the DOJ too, the Department of Justice. They want to get rid of. Uh, what is all of this stuff? All right, so I'm pulling up a, a summary of it. Uh, let's see, da, 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 da. notes, further reading notes. The Heritage Foundation are, are the people mm -hmm. who created it, right? Mm -hmm. So, what are, what are the policies? Census citizen question, uh, Christian nationalism. Yeah, that's climate change mitigation. It advises a, a future Republican president to go further than merely nullifying President Biden's executive orders on climate change. It proposes abandoning uh, strategies for reducing greenhouse gas emissions responsible for climate change, including by repealing regulations that curb emissions, downsizing the Environmental Protection Agency, who is the EPA, and abolishing the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration which uh the project calls one of the main drivers of the climate change alarm industry so so a lot of it is based on like what they believe is prop it's like they 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 choosing propaganda and trying to make it seem like all this other stuff that's backed by science is propaganda Go ahead. so this was established in 20 in 22 april 22 yeah it's brand new but they yeah, say it, that it, it actually, actually started in the 80s mm. Mm -hmm. It man, the the gist of it, from my perspective, is they want to shrink government, basically, right? Um, to a degree, I do think that that uh, that there's a lot of overregulation, right? And uh, that's a lot of room for a lot of people to do a lot of shady things behind closed doors, right? As far as stealing money, funneling money into, you know. To where they can you know personally benefit from tax money um but the right side do the same thing and just in a different way you know what i'm saying with the corporate welfare right. like with, when they bailed out the banks or when they bail out the automobile in the industry that's not the workers that's getting those benefits that's the ceos that's getting those benefits that's the top one percent of the uh, you know of our country and when you like it's it's basically it's coming into to the point to where it's not white and black no more which it really never was but they were able to use race as a facade you know to uh to push agendas but it's really coming into the point to where we talking social class bro it's class warfare when, um the people who are at the top and who are empowered want to keep power right so what they want to do is to your point, uh, neutralize any threat to power being redistributed or to resources being redistributed. They want to neutralize that, right? So it's just about uh, when you talk about, uh, I think Trump, Trump is the perfect puppet for that mindset, right? He represents that 1%. He represents those CEO, those global guy, you know, uh, CEO types. And, um, of course, he will push, you know, agendas or uh, litig not litigation, but um, uh, he would push. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, he would push uh, like to change the rules and change the guidelines to benefit him and people who, you know, who uh, from his social class. Right. right? Um, but. 
it's basically a class warfare manifesto project 2025 the the right. smallest the smallest factor of it is to look at it like racist racism right all of those things racism religion uh those factors that's in there is really just a means to control groups of people that's all that is you feel me because you're not gonna tell me somebody who's supposed to be christian right and they okay with cutting out like programs that that are feeding people who who, who you know really in position not in position to feed themselves and right. we got to be honest about how to, how these dynamics develop in this country we got to be honest about that because i know this is an old cliche but i don't know too many niggas that own uh planes and boats to bring dope and guns over here you feel me no. so if right. you're talking about how these illegal guns and drugs end up in these red line communities how who turned the blind eye when they got here you get what i'm saying so those are things that are controlled by people who are empowered to control those type of things so uh to to just write it off and just say oh, okay we're gonna leave these people behind because they don't want a better life anyway that's basically what it is and they want to get rid of uh diversity equity and conclusion and inclusion uh uh programs as well so mm -hmm. you know it, it it's it looks to me that they want to create a permanent working class to where it's yeah it's, it's even more difficult to even take yourself from poverty and, and win you know so that's what i see a lot happening uh the they they are they all talking about rid of ultimately getting rid of the income tax and making it a consumption tax which that's something that i actually particularly liked uh when it was being proposed some years ago where it's like why would they but why would they want that all right so it envisions eventually moving from an income tax to a consumption tax such as a national sales tax in the interim the project seeks to extend the tax cuts and jobs act uh, it further recommends simplifying individual income taxes to two flat tax rates 15 percent on income up to the social security wage base of one hundred sixty-eight thousand six hundred dollars in 2024 and 30 percent above that uh, an unspecified standard deduction would be included but most deductions credits and exclusions would be eliminated the proposal would likely increase taxes significantly for millions of low and middle income uh, households it aims to reduce the corporate tax rate from 21 percent to 18 calling it the most damaging tax in the country uh so that speaks to the whole corporate thing <laughs> corporate but, welfare, what, bro. but you think about like some countries <laughs> operate like that there's a flat tax there's a consumption tax like we are overly taxed in this country so yeah, but that's, from, that's because of big government yeah that's that's fact right. so we do have to uh create some type of new tax code that takes away like I don't know why I feel like I'm getting some distortion and maybe it's just my headphones uh but you think about it we get taxed on our income right then we go to the grocery store we get taxed on the stuff we buy then we pay property tax. Then we pay ad valorem taxes for our car. But after mm -hmm. we buy the car, we get charged taxes just to buy in the car. Like mm -hmm. everything is taxed. So what's really our living wage when you think about all the taxes that's coming out of our pockets? Like most of the most of the country is in poverty. Facts. So I think that's something that does need to be addressed. But I don't feel good about that person being in office and being someone that implements it because i think that's something he could easily skirt and still get that other stuff pushed through uh that racist stuff that whole getting rid of dei programs i don't like that the whole point of that the, the, remember the whole point of the racism thing who represents the majority of this country country uh black and brown people You really believe that? You talking about population wise? Mm -hmm. Look up the percentages. Uh, black people represent 14%. 13%. Yeah, 13 or 14%. Uh, and I think brown people are like 20. So I know it's, it's more than us. So black and brown, that's 14 and 20 what? Let's just say 27%. Yeah. That's and 31%. Then got, and then you got the ambiguous. <laughs> Rick the, Fox, the, the Rick Foxes and Amber Roses of the world who 
<laughs> he called them. because there are people who don't who don't who, who don't really put that stuff on their census right so we're going up for the right. census bureau but but this is what's the happening point I'm I'm making is, the, the point i'm making is that we are outnumbered by white people bro in, in this country that's why we're considered minorities right well i, I never consider myself a minority so if i'm trying to change the whole structure and the whole infrastructure how things are uh run in this country who should i pander to well if you're white you're gonna pander to your people no not if you're white if you want the power you gotta pander to who's who, who's the 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 numbers you 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 don't have to but i understand the play right i understand the you, play yeah bow bow i get it right but you really gotta you really gotta pander to the working class people that's who you truly got to pander to because that whole white and black and brown thing is going to be almost null and void as this population starts to diversify even more and then you're really just dealing with like who has money versus who doesn't so when you talk about social class and classism like they have a lot of that happening in india right now there's over a billion people in there mm -hmm. they have the caste system it's like certain people are born in the particular caste they'll never come mm -hmm. out of that they have right. to come here in order to change that so when you get like a lot of hotels out here that's owned by people with the last name Patel, right? That's, yeah, that's, that's the social class, yeah. But guess what? Patels in India aren't high on the total. Right. So they right. have to come here in order to make a way. <clears throat> so so go ahead, Big. I think you was about to say something. No, I said, damn, like, that's crazy. Yeah, it, it, it's wild. So I think when it comes to that Project 2025, it, it's certain parts of it that's just scary. And you just yeah. feel like yeah. totalitarian kind of like, yeah very much so but that's also why i say i don't see him being in office i don't see him making it to the uh presidency and i mean and i he, hope you're right but nah he, he in that whole assassination thing like come on yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Come on! Did, but, did you hear the sounds of it? That joint sound like fucking like like a paint gun, sir. Like I'm yeah, like, <laughs> like <laughs> you say, like, you got hit with a paintball, red paintball. <laughs> how somebody make it on the roof with all that all that security around there? He just walk in there with a rifle, get on the roof, all that stuff, and come on, fam. Like and then people screaming, was, "Look, he's on the roof!" And they ain't doing what? nothing. That's a wow. And then no. and then go ahead. But think about this, huh? Like you, 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 you made a good point. You made the point when you talked about um, the working class versus, you know, the the corporate class. Let's call it that. Go ahead. If I represent the interest of keeping the power structure the way it is, why would I not divide the working class and use race as a tool to do that? That's always been the case. Exactly. Remember. When we think about uh, Karl Marx and uh, Lenin, people like that, right? Their thing was representing the workers. Mm -hmm. That's what socialism and all of that was born out of, right? Right. So it, it was. It's not. It's this country does not want that to be the case. They don't want to empower workers like that. So we they need to divide the subgroup, and that's what they use race for. Because that's why they use race. Because the the poor white people want to still be made to feel like they have mm -hmm. a chance to be rich white people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it, so they'll 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 because they like if I'm on this side I might have a chance. So they'll vote they'll vote for somebody like Trump knowing that he don't really give a damn about them. Exactly. He don't care about nobody actually. He don't even he not even but, really a Republican. My, a lot of you know and and i I'm, I'm cool with a lot of my neighbors right um and a lot of them you know lean right as far as their political leanings and i can understand why uh just from knowing them and knowing they have what's you know considered like traditional christian values in regards to some you know agendas as like uh you know uh the lgbtq whatever you know uh agendas they totally against that and the left supports those agendas and they but they they you know they they group it all into diversity and inclu diversity and inclusion you know and i can understand that point as well um but i so if somebody is adamant about what they believe says on this hand 
but they see this and that's this just happens to be the thing that the left hand is is you know pushing then of course they're gonna stand against that and rep and and vote for or support whoever stands with them on that issue the problem is you got a lot of these politicians that's dividing people based on the issues you get what i'm saying and then right. and, and they're using uh the stuff like diversity and inclusion they're using stuff like uh climate change they're using these different things uh, uh law and order they're using these different things to separate the working class well, it highlights the laziness of of the the populace though because no one wants to dive into their critical thinking bag and really makes decision for themselves they'd rather be told this is the way you should go this is the way this is the other way mm -hmm. you should go so when you think about like evangelicals and and the christian traditional values you know there's a time where christians was lynching black people and they was calling that traditional values right so Back. i don't i don't really buy into that specifically more than i just buy into the fact that they just want to be lazy and they just want to be told what to do and hide and and just not hold themselves accountable for learning more about who represents them but remember how true christian traditional values is not boxed into somebody's interpretation of it, right so if some racist white dude in 1930 was using the Bible or using Christian values as a means or as a reason to hang black people, that don't make that real Christian values. You get what I'm saying? That's not real Christian values. Right, but it was being leveraged. That's the misunderstanding, and, and right, but that's no different than weaponizing the uh, the, the right wing or the uh, conservative values of somebody saying like, uh, we believe in law and order, right? And using that, as a as a uh, dog whistle if you will to get all of the support that they're looking for or that they want from this group of people and then remember it all boils back down to all they want to do is separate the masses because to your point to your point that is what a power is and that was what the uh the um the the, the panthers were saying when they were saying power to the people Right. The people was not black, just black people. Right. Right. Let's be real. The reason they had to neutralize Fred Hampton is because he had white, poor whites, Latin gangs. Like we talking about not just gangs, like community groups of every color. He had the original Rainbow Coalition. Right. You feel right. me? They had to neutralize him. He was too powerful. The nigga was 21. Yes, he was. 21 with that kind of influence and that kind of sway imagine when he was 31 possibly but i mean i you think get what that's, I'm saying? That's, that's wishful thinking in a lot of ways yeah well that's all we can do is speculate because we know what right. happened december 4th 1969 and we also know what ended up happening to huey p newton so he he became a shell of himself over time but why though well he, because he got addicted to drugs where the drugs come from you still got to take them dog i'm not i'm not and i'm not i'm not taking uh a person can only take so much before they break bro that's the fact mm, that's the facts bro that's the fact you like yeah. it's like punching up a, punching a uh, uh, uh punching on a brick wall eventually your hand gonna break dog yeah but it, it, it's still about how you how you channel even if you feel broken, it's still about how you how you respond. That's important, right? So you can't be self-destructive and think you're going to construct something of value, right? Because you're destroying yourself. So when he became a, a drug addict, that was the end of that, right? So when you say Fred Hampton, imagine what he could have been. He could have been a drug addict too. We don't know. Well, we don't. Know, we don't know him to have been one though. But he, he was a bit oh, arrogant. But you think so? Oh, he was. He got real arrogant because what happened with Fred Hampton, uh, instead of him recognizing the position that he was in, he went ahead and moved in the neighborhood for and, and made an announcement of where he was staying. And he would have people coming in and out of his home and in Chicago. You right? now you say, right? right arrogance right they say the, the they say what youth youth is wasted on youth the is young. wasted on the young yep i always right, say that 
because that's what he ended up doing. He had, he had Panthers coming in and out of his house, uh, where his wife was staying, yeah. where she was pregnant. Too easy to infiltrate. Yeah, and it was so easy to even get close to him. Like that's what I mean by you don't know because to me that was reckless for someone who can seem as disciplined as he was. There was some level of lack of discipline in that security and in, in, in insulating himself from the harm. So those police officers was able to just run through there, shoot the place up. Like that should have that could, that should have never happened. The way yeah, he should have been he should have been way more insulated. The guy who ended up being the one who kind of gave him a drug, you know what I'm saying? Bill O'Neill. Yeah, Bill O'Neill. He was able to do that. And, and that's the thing. So when I when you start talking about what Pac could have been, with, I, that's the reality that I always looking through that lens because I know what happened to uh, Huey P. Like Huey P was over the hill when he got killed. But mm -hmm. look what happened before he got killed. Like he was already done. And then uh, Eldridge, he, he went to um, Ghana. Uh, I think he went to Ghana. And then uh still uh, raping Bobby white Seale. women. Oh man. <laughs> what happened to Bobby Seal? I forget what happened to Bobby Seal. But they just got they they destroyed, they separated and conquered them. They did it through yeah. uh divide and conquer in a lot of ways. And yeah, drugs had a part in that, but the discipline, right? When you talk about like Biko goes to the gym re religiously, that's discipline. And I think sometimes with good ideas, if you like discipline, those di those ideas are just ideas and suggestions because you like the discipline. Right. I know not to start at the gym until I'm ready to go to the gym and really put my all in it. Because other than that, it's just the idea. I went to the gym today and then next month. Oh, yeah, dog. You know, I ain't keep with that shit. Like, it's just it's just the reality of who I am. And I know that. So with certain situations, I'm not going to put myself in because I know I lack the discipline in it. Right. Ha. Go ahead. Ha. I hear everything you saying. Go ahead. Right. You forgetting the experience that you've garnered and the perspective that you've gathered over time. They're not the beneficiaries of 40 something years. They're not the beneficiaries of 50 something years. We talk about people whose life were relegated to a 25 year period, 21 we year 20, period. We were, we, I was 21 moving like that, bro. Like I just know. Okay, so, was, so, so you're the exception like, to the rule. I think there's a lot of exceptions to the rule. I just think it's, it's more than enough people on this planet to know that is I'm not the only person. You know what I'm saying? It's I'm not, and I'm, I'm not saying that that you that you're not right, but like they're always going to be outliers, right? Mm -hmm. All that's well and fine, but we, when we talk about making change, that that's when we talk about people who are bold enough to step out there. It takes a certain amount of naivete to even put yourself out there. You get what I'm saying? And a lot really? of times it's those you, yeah, those you people. The younger people move with that. People like us who have experiences that kind of temper us. You feel me? It depends. They didn't have the. I mean, think about it though, bro. Like, there's a certain fearlessness that I didn't have when I was younger that I have now, right? There's a certain I don't give a f that I have now that I didn't have when I was younger, because I was always someone who needed the information before I can move. Right. I needed to know what I'm moving on and why I'm moving. I was in a car once upon a time and in the car to go do something and find somebody because mm -hmm. of something they did. And even in that moment, I felt like I didn't have any control because I didn't know what was going to happen, how it was going to go right. about. You couldn't play the averages. Right. So that alone, and I was young. I was like 24. Four, I think I was still I was still in college, so I had already moved from Queens, but I found myself in Queens, and mm -hmm. I had the presence of mind to be like, "Yo, let's let's go ahead and pull this over. Let's go ahead and head back to the block." Because I understood that the people so I was you hit them with the tray off boys in the hood. Yo, don't oh, let yeah, me yo. out. <laughs> but it, but but yeah. it, but let me. It, but it wasn't because of fear fear of the situation. No, yeah, or the yeah. It was right. because I know they're not thinking the way I'm thinking. They're acting off emotion, and when mm -hmm. you're in those situations, you have no room for emotions. So I'm saying this: I was that way at 21, but I had enough okay. understanding of who I was. I mean, 20 plus years old. I had enough understanding of who I was and what my capability was in certain situations to know if I'm undermanned or I'm outmatched mentally or, or intellectually in that particular situation 
physically I'm out man because of, even though I'm with people that I know and family and stuff I can't put weight I, on them I I know I I know they not thinking how I'm thinking because they they'll fuck it up <laughs> you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. they'll me they'll mess it up and we can't mess this up because that means my life so that's so when I'm talking about young Fred Hampton he 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 had enough going on in in a way with all to know that's that you're risking your life doing that bro you need more security you need more insulation so that's why ha. i say he was arrogant because you still you still missing a, a couple key things though how did you get the way you are what do you mean? how did you like a lot of that was the was was instilled I, I think, in you bro i think i think what he what he's saying because you're, you're looking from the lens of where you at now you know what i mean like all this stuff that you learned up to the point that where you at now and mm -hmm. and and so now you, you have the, the foresight to see like oh well this if um if he was 20, 21 it should have been this way but you're at this age now you don't been you don't experience so so much so you're, you're coming from the from the point of everything you ex, you, are, you have already experienced think, Except but even I'm talking about I, I but I get what, in that age range right I was in that age range with that experience and I'm mm. telling you if if we can praise Fred Hampton for being able to bring those people together at a young age we could also say bro you ain't have it all together my man and that's not because of your age that's because you yeah I'm not saying uh, yeah I'm I, I don't think it was just that I think that's a very very broad stroke way to look at it and this is so much nuance even in his story right mm -hmm. if he was 21 and he was in the position of leadership. Where was his OGs? Who taught him? My well, point I'm making is, he, he if you were, to, hold up, hold up. If you were to, nah, Fred Hampton from Chicago, right? A Huey and them yeah. is from Oakland. Oakland so right. you get what I'm saying? Like they might have gave him the blueprint as far as like uh, the Panthers, but who was like the Panthers didn't start the 66, 67. So if if he was 21 and 69, take three years off of that, that means he 18 when the Panthers started, right? Mm -hmm. What was his tutelage? What was he, like, was he father? He had you a father. had a, you have a, you missing yeah. what I'm saying. Like you, you say Frank Hampton's dad was in his life? Yeah, his mother and his father. The day that he got killed, his, his, his father came no, his father already knew about it, found out his mom was coming home and they basically I didn't know that. Yeah. Like I'm I'm like I'm actively <laughs> reading a book on Fred Hampton right now. So there's certain mm -hmm. intricate parts about the assassination of Fred Hampton that I got a little more information on. Okay. So that's why that's why I said he's okay. He he was arrogant. And that's how I knew when he moved to the Chicago neighborhood, he shouldn't have moved there. And I'm just like when you got enemies and your enemies are the police, you know better. You already acknowledge that they the devil. You already acknowledge that. So if I can listen to these speeches and hear you say that and acknowledge it, the only thing that's keeping you is your arrogance and your invincibility. Now, that is youthfulness right there, that sense of invincibility. Yeah, that's arrogance, but that is arrogance. So, so that's, that's, the, the point that I was driving... I, I understand where you're coming from with that. You have a little bit more information as far as the intricacies than than I do. Granted, right? It's still 21, bro. And that's what that's the grace I'm giving it. Right? That don't negate the facts. Right? But at the at the same time, he still had the presence of mind at 21 to know that he needed to galvanize more than just black people in order yeah. to make the change that he was trying to make. That's the point I'm driving home okay i respect that i appreciate that um we got on that we was talking about trump and we talked about project 2025 then we got on that I, I, i'm not sure how we how we segued in but that was bro, good, we be saving bro <laughs> but but that was a good that was a good segue because it, it shows that the attempt to neutralize black empowerment has always been something that's been happening and is not going to change so when you talk about yeah. project 2025 like it is going to disproportionately affect our community more than anybody else's when you say our community you mean black people black people i think it's gonna affect poor whites the same way it's gonna affect us 
I think the the fallacy is that they make us believe that it impacts us different. It don't. It don't. These policies is meant to new to 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 benefit corporate structure. So you believe that the white man, poor white, excuse me, the white, the poor white guy, and the poor black guy are on the same level. In what way? through the lens of the government through the lens of those white people in power i do i but i do recognize that they have the ability to assimilate differently than we do right so it's not evil but then we are in the same boat though yeah but th somebody's boat have holes in it the other one don't right so to me that's how i view that like our boat always got some holes that we got to patch up so we we spend a lot of time just trying to patch up our holes we never really get no real sailing going. We have the, the white guy might be the poor white guy might be on a boat that's kind of near ours, but it ain't got the holes in it that ours has. So they still can operate and still get to certain destinations that we can't get to, or they won't. We won't allow to get to unless we get some money. And then how do we get that? We got to get through entertainment. We got to go through schooling. We got to do a lot of stuff that don't mm -hmm. allow us to just get in. That cost us. It, that cost us to, to get there. Yeah. Whereas the other people, they can just go leverage their relationships. I really believe they're just as disenfranchised as we are, bro. I okay. really believe that. Um, I think we view it differently, though, because I think what's been pitched to them is that, you know, they, they have the just, I guess, genetic indoctrination that they're better, <laughs> right? Um, but they are in the same boat we in, bro. Trust me I when I say. I, I wish I agreed with you on that one. They are not in the same boat as us. <laughs> they are not. It's just a different. It, it's just a different thing. Like it looks that way, aesthetically, but the reality is, it's just not. You know what I mean? The trust is going to be different. Like when when you walk into those rooms, and that resume looks the same as that other person that's when you realize oh it's it, these two things are not the same my resume can be I, just as it, good as that person i understand i think we looking at it on two different levels bro i'm I, like i'm really looking at it uh from the perspective of the policies that are in place they're not as uh beneficial to them as 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 like when you really really look at the job they've done to group that group of people, which actually remember the corporate class and the let's just say the 1% is 1% that don't represent a whole bunch of Americans, bro. Right. Right. But when they group all white people to that 1% and they can make us view them like they're all that 1%, that's a powerful tool. And that tool works both ways because it it warps the way we see it, but it also warps the way they see it. So they see themselves as a part of that one percent. So they don't even need to strive towards that one percent because they already group with it. So whatever benefit them, benefit me. That's what they really believe. And if they could get us to believe that, then we start fighting them. You get what yeah, I'm saying? It's when the same, that, go ahead. I don't think it's that we're we're starting to fight them. We are responding. We are respond. We've always been responsive to what's happening to us. We've never been proactive in violence. It's always been a response to what's being propagated against us. So you even play chess? Though, though, I haven't in a while, but I know how to play chess. So if I'm moving on one side of the chessboard and I'm moving a knight, and I keep moving this knight to make you pay attention and, uh, and respond to the moves my knight making, only for me to use my queen to really do the damage that to checkmate you. You get what I'm saying? The piece that's moving is not the piece you need to be paying attention to. That's my point. You feel me? So well, in in playing chess, all the pieces matter that's being moved because it's a. Set. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not saying they don't. I'm not saying right. they don't. Right, because you're, you're, you're moving that knight for a reason, the position. You're not just moving a knight or even a rook just so it gives the appearance that that's the play. But you are still setting yourself up so you can have multiple attacks at the king. So that's, at least that's how I play it. 
right i'm not just moving pieces just for the sake of it to throw you off because that means then you only got real one real play and you hoping that i look at that play as being the one but it's this one no nah, you set your chessboard up to have multiple attacks so when you actually get to that point your king can't go nowhere that's how you end up checkmating somebody's like i got mating too and the moment i get there guess what you try to move here no i got you there too oh you try to move here i got you there too you know so what I the got, pieces on the board is what pawns you talking about? We talking about the, the, just the pieces in no. I'm I, so you got we talking cast, about man. attacking in, in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. That's where you weaponize things like diversity and inclusion. That's where you weaponize things like uh, Christian nationalism. That's where you weaponize things like the the border wars. That's where you weaponize things like uh uh what's going on in Russia or China playing with their money, right? But at the end of the day, we really we don't we're we not even aware of the effects of all of those things on our bottom line because we down here in the gutter. OK, you get what I'm saying? We down here in the gutter. So the only thing we see when we think the, the, the white people, the rich white people, we think in the, the one we see. We thinking this dude in these in these duckhead shorts and this tucked in shirt, uh, polo shirt with his loafers on, with the douchebag outfit. That's who we see. So we <laughs> automatically attribute that 1% to him. Cause he, man, he look like he got a 401k. <laughs> My daddy don't have a 401k. You get what I'm saying? And we right, start, right. we start automatically viewing the enemy as that guy that we see and not the one we don't. You get what I'm saying? I and understand I think, that perspective. Yeah, I think that's, that's the fallacy of the way they play the game, bro. They they playing dirty pool, bro. And if we start, they got both of us looking at the same cup from two different perspectives. But they're all still agents. They're all still agents. Absolutely. Right. And I'm not denying that at all, though. Because remember, they can weaponize the the um the their misperception of me. You feel me? But they also have the ability to like you said earlier assimilate when you think about the matrix you brought up you know chess i'll yeah, bring up the matrix. like agent agent, agent, agent yeah. smith was the most powerful agent but at any point all those other agents can become agents any, of, yep. of other things any, right mm -hmm. anything connected to the matrix yep right so for me i always look at all of them like they could have they had that black and white suit on that white shirt that black tie that black suit and at any point they could become a police officer they become a, a a doctor they become a teacher at any point they can morph into these things but the whole purpose is to keep people in the matrix right so even so when you talk about like we're all on the same level that's why i pushed back on that because i'm like actually no because because of their proximity to the all their perceived proximity to success they can be used to leverage yeah they'll idea. defend it they'll, they'll defend, defend it, it right mm -hmm. and that's what i that's why i said the thing is the uh, the project 2025 thing is a dangerous thing because the people who are actually gonna like really be lobbying for it are people who really don't don't really aren't really in that space like that you know what i'm saying but i don't trust them either just because they mm -hmm. poor i don't trust them because they have that complexion with the connection that can set stuff up and you thinking that's your homeboy and they all cool look like you you work with them right we we see how people are man you see self-segregated situations at work. Oh right? yeah, people just people self-segregate. Oh a, yeah, a, you know on B, y'all got a whole gate. Right, you right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, but now for us, like, we'll we'll bring everybody into the fold because that's the community type of perspective we have yeah. in life. But when it comes to that other side, they'll do it and they'll try to like. I I find them more mimicking how we are than them being genuine who they are and when they're around so, us i i yeah i okay right so i always be like man who you you, you the boss's son you know what i'm saying because i i just i just i just get this sense like okay this is more to it than just how you communicate and then mm -hmm. after that is like then then after a while you just don't even talk to each other anymore because you, you realize just a vibe is off but mm -hmm. i got a little off with that the point i'm making is that as much as you're saying that yeah they're in the same boat they're not dog they're not at all not even close we differ absolutely we differ all right because guess next what? topic 
<laughs> what? When it all hit the fan, everybody going to smell. Ain't nothing going to happen, bro. I'm going to tell you why. Because it, it ain't supposed to happen. They were scared when Reagan took office. They were scared when Trump first took office. They were scared when... Talking about the race war. A race war. Yeah, like, like, yeah like that's I such said, bullshit. The, the republic has to continue. So it's just certain things that ain't going to allow to happen. And, you know, so you see the stuff in Israel now. The uh, the international court has condemned Israel from its uh, occupation of Palestine. They've also condemned them for the settlements, uh, the genocide, and they have ordered them to uh, begin to pull out of pause, pull out of Palestine. That's why I got a pause moment on such a serious issue, right? Like that's wow. that's crazy. <laughs> Philosophical. <laughs> Philosophical. <laughs> But they, they've ordered them to uh, leave Palestine, give the land back, allow the people who were uh, refugeed out of it to return back, uh, to stabilize those settlements, get rid of them, and give the land back. Uh, what do you think of that? Um, If I didn't, like, if, so if we talking biblically, that's Let's one thing, that. right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. But I've also researched enough to know that the Zion, the Zionist movement is not religious. That's number one, right? Do you, do you, let me ask you real quick. I don't want to throw you off. Do you take the Bible literally? Not all of it. I, th I think some of it is allegory. I, I, I think some of it is the, the purpose and point of it. Some of it is the principles behind. That's why you have to do the research. Um, I also understand that when you applying biblical principles um, to your life, you have to understand who wrote who wrote what. Right. You have to understand the time and the culture of the time that it was written, the original audience. And it can't mean more more or something different to me today than it meant to the original audience that it was written to. You get what I'm saying? As far as the meat, the pause, the, the core of what what is being said you get what i'm saying so okay. i'm not one of those people that just apply it bro I'm, I'm taught well how to study the bible you get what i'm saying so i don't misquote scripture mm -hmm. i'm not gonna uh, um what, what we call uh eisegete the text and what that means is and put your own meaning in it right you're supposed to exegete it meaning pull the meaning of it out Pause. Yeah, you out of control, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm. But and then we talking about the Bible, bro. Like, guys, you wild. Oh, they was wild in the biblical days. Oh they yeah, yeah they, definitely they definitely were. They definitely were. But so you don't. No. So you do speak it literally, but you interpret. No, it the that's not what I said. You said that's you not what I said. Literally. There are some things in the Bible that are literal, but there are also some things that are allegorical. They are the allegorical. There are things in the Bible that are oral tradition. So they may not be line for line. Like the concepts like 40 days, 40 nights. When you hear it, when you see that, it don't necessarily mean 40 actual days and 40 actual nights. It means the beginning and the completion of a cycle. You get what I'm saying? When you see uh, numbers, and you have to understand what those numbers represent. So it's not, but that's, it's it's not always what's on the surface of a scripture and a lot of people who don't know that and don't operate you know don't really know how to really do their research don't go to the original text of the bible when you're talking about uh the old testament is written in uh hebrew and aramaic and the new testament is written in greek and aramaic you got to go to the original text to really understand what those words mean in the in, in context and if you're not doing that then you're not doing your due diligence and then you can't just be weaponizing stuff that you ain't even researched. So I don't just take the Bible literal. Some of it is allegorical. But you don't. But no, nobody's speaking Greek or Aramaic, right? I get I that. Know. But when but the original text was written in that. So when you talk about transliteration, that can change some of the meaning because what a word mean in Hebrew, they may not have that word in in in, in Latin. They may not have that word. That that's in Latin in English, so they got to get the closest thing to that meaning. So you might not be pulling all of the meaning out of that word unless you go back to the original text. 
it's a very interesting perspective uh i mean you you're christian so you know what you have to do to learn it uh, i just i find it because we talking about the israel and how they interpret it you know their their book their scripture to take over and use it to take over you know but remember how huh? that's the zionist movement that did that and that's not a religious organization no it's not but that was political it's not religious so, I, so they uh, i think they did a lot of dirty shit under religious pretense and i don't respect we, that but religious religion is is more perception than anything right because all it takes is for you to consistently uh, build a following and next thing you know it's a religion so that yeah. could easily become a religion i mean look what the jehovah's witness like they just came out of somewhere in the 60s or something all of a sudden they at your door on saturdays knocking trying to figure out what's going on mm -hmm. so you know just because they're not a religious thing it doesn't it doesn't mean anything i think there's a lot of people who subscribe to different religions who use that religion to to Fact. propagate atrocities towards other people Fact. so when you talk about the the bible that's why i asked you if you read the bible literally because i think some people use it just for the sake of how they want to interpret it that I almost remember that's called eisegesis and that's not right. a real word that's just me using the using right, right, uh, right, right. The, the opposite of exegete right so and when you talk about aramaic and greek who's interpreting it for people who don't speak i speak arabic right i i, I know if i read the quran in arabic i know what that word means in english mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no one we use what's called aramaic. the concordance we what's use that? what's called the concordance a Bible concordance is the tool that is used to uh, go back to the original text of the Bible. Is that like an app or some shit? They have an app. It's called the Strong's Concordance. And who, who so created what, what, that? Is, is it like the the Greek word and the English word? Like it's, it's a translator? Like I don't understand. What, what is that? Well, yeah, it is. Um, it's, how could I put it? so it's a little it, person it, telling it, you it's wrong it's, that's wrong <laughs> it's basically a uh a <laughs> that's not the word it's, it's, it's basically a translator bro okay it's basically and i've been in um my my pastor is a uh he has a doctorate in uh and what is his doctorate divinity and uh christian noise? education what's that noise oh it's gone that's over here that's over here oh so um the church i go to is not a big church but it's very very based around teaching right and teaching how to to study the bible and how to understand what you're reading you know what i mean he drill that into us pause okay wow yeah you out of line you out of line bro like but y'all um, christians is crazy man go ahead not nah, boy <laughs> but i think um just in terms of the way uh the whole thing going on over there and a lot of things is done in god's name on both sides of that right um you remember y'all have rifts in uh in islam as well you got sunni and shiite one of those is way more radical than the other, right? And um, I understand that when the Prophet Muhammad died, you know, one, some of them was was trying to go with the caliphate and some was trying to go with his son. And that's how the rift started, right? That's a good question. I thought it was some people trying to go with his daughter, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I, I never heard it to be his daughter. Yeah. Um, but that's neither here nor there. The point I'm making is, when you talk about interpretation, even Arabic, everybody was speaking Arabic. It was written in Arabic and everybody made their own mind up with what they was going to go with anyway. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because it was it was he passed away and then his brother. They were saying his brother was the 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 lack of a better word, rightful heir, but it actually was his daughter. But because she was a woman, it was it was some some pushback about that. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. But the point I'm making, bro, is. It's it's all left up to people's interpretations, bro. And uh, when you, when you when we talking about what's going on over there with Israel and Palestine, man, it's it's really sad, bro. You know what I'm saying? And 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 just to know that 
uh, so many atrocities on both ends of the spectrum have been done in the name of God and in the name of religion and belief. It's ridiculous. Do you think really Israel is, has I a right? I don't think God no way in there. You think Israel has a right to the land? I think God is the judge of that, bro, because um, if we look at how they how they left the land, I mean, what biblical basis do they have to be there? You said how they left the land? Mm-hmm. You talking about like thousands and thousands of years ago? Yeah, you're talking about in biblical times. So um Solomon so was you, the last so that's, king. So that's literate. That's literal to you. That really that, absolute to me, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do believe that. Uh Solomon was the last king of the United Israel, right? After him, it's uh I think it was uh two of his sons, Rehoboam and Jeroboam. The kingdom split. They had the Israel, and then they had the southern king, which was the northern kingdom. There was, uh, I want to say, nine tribes, and the southern kingdom was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Those were the, the the tribes of those three sons of, of Jacob, who was renamed Israel uh, by God. Um, that that they made up the southern kingdom. Okay, and uh, the. Northern Kingdom turned away from God and was, you know, into idolatry and stuff like that. So they were uh, 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 attacked and taken over and invaded by the Assyrians. And sometime later, the Southern Kingdom was attacked by the Babylonians. So that's how they that's their precursor for going back there as saying that's their their rightful land. No, I don't. I don't know. I, I I'm not abreast of why. I'm just saying that's how they ended up leaving. But I don't know um, what uh, what scriptures they use. I'm not Jew. I'm not a Jew. I'm I'm not a Jew. So right. So that's the thing. They they're using this belief that the scriptures teaches is that we were here long ago in according to the Bible, and this mm -hmm. is our rightful home. Yeah, but who 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 was here? Because um. Right, the 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 people that's saying we were here were 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 they the actual people that were there? Just because you're saying that you're this label, that doesn't mean that you were those original people. Right, you're coming back as those people, but those people that was there. Yeah, I mean that's a lot. There's a lot of speculation to that. Because in in effect, they are using the Judaism religion, the religion of Judaism. Right, and that's to, not Christian. No, 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 no. It's, it's Judaism. It's an Abrahamic religion still, but mm -hmm. it, it, it's like he they using that as saying we are the original Jews and the original holders of this land. But there, it's just it's, I believe it's more of a a veiled thing. It's just a a, a, a straw man, so to speak. That th this is who we are, but the undercurrent is is some sinister stuff because there's no way mm -hmm. you can have that type of love for god and do that type of stuff to people right it's the same thing that happened to the native americans when they came here from from great britain leaving the king and next thing you know we gave you this parcel of land all right it's all good next thing oh no we need more land now oh we can't have it i guess we'll have to kill you and that's what ended up happening to the native americans and that's what happened in israel what happened in palestine right when they allowed them to come uh to show up they gave him a home. Okay, this is for you. Oh, we need more land now. It's, we, we're growing so much now. Oh, okay. Well, uh, now we go. We then Britain pulled out, and next thing you know, they everybody was just killing Palestinians, and it's been a lot of bloodshed on both sides, of course. But when you look at the original sin, the original sin was taking those people's land in the first place and believing that you had the rightful ownership to it because of what the text said. So, so where did the Palestinian people come from? They were considered to be Philistines. They're like Persians, right? So I think that's part of the Ottoman Empire. They were so are they, are they Philistines? That's that's what, what Palestine, Philistines, that's kind of I believe that's how they it's like one and the same. But my my understanding is that they were part of the Ottoman Empire. And somehow there was some situation with Great Britain and they had some broken some deal. After World War One when the Ottoman yeah. Empire right so they, they broke it some deal and, and 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 it got to that point um but they was already there for like thousands of years 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like now you after after Hitler, well it it started before then, but then the the full migration happened post World War II because of what Hitler did to the Jews in Germany. Mm-hmm. Right. So then it's like we need we need a. Do you believe that post. actually happened? I don't believe it didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I do believe it happened. Right. So for me, it's like it's like somebody asking me, did the Rwandan genocide happen? Mm-hmm. Right. I, I wasn't, right, I wasn't there. there to see it, but I yeah, I got right. I got I, I got yeah. you. Whew, that was something too. You know, so it's just it, it's just a lot of messed up stuff on that side. And our country is supporting our country is certainly supporting Israel in in this particular case, where I feel like we need to be more neutral and be on the side of the international law and what law states internationally, because we don't we don't we're not that's not our country or our our region to be governing but i understand why we do it because in order for us to really have some type of influence in there we need to have an ally in that region and that's what israel is so i feel like in a lot of ways israel is more like a a satellite uh branch of the united states yeah it's like it's like a satellite branch of the united states so I can dig that. So that's my perspective on that. That's our perspective on that. We spoke that's about all a lot I of gotta things. Say about that. <laughs> what, what what we was speaking about before um <laughs> Wi-Fi and everything started so acting up was the whole Mace and uh, mm-hmm. Jay Prince there. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can that, we can add that clip, or yeah. we can just go into it. No, nah, right we, we go into it right now. <laughs> so I I don't know what I what I missed. It was like fifteen minutes. I was just gone. A lot. To get this together. Yeah, yeah. Nah, well, uh, Cordell was breaking down to me, like you know, Jay Prince's background, because because all I knew was just rap a lot, and he was one of them dudes that you didn't mess with. I didn't really know like anything behind it. So he's just breaking down, like yeah, dude was really that dude. Da, 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 da. But. Mm-hmm. But he he, he stepped he stepped he stepped out he stepped out of that um out of that position man like basically like you said he wrote a book but it seems like he's not following those you know what I mean those codes and ethics you know what I mean right look look what happened to John Gotti right he wanted to be a celebrity right and he made some some real some real bad decisions Bozo. Paul Cost- Paul Castellano right that wasn't a smart move to make right. Paul that was his only move, though. Yeah, because he, but that, but you know why? Because they started, kill him, right? Because they were selling drugs, and he didn't want to part to that, right? Well, so, it, you know, it was his brother uh, who was doing it, and he didn't want to sell out his his brother and, and the guys that was under him. But because he was mm. their couple, he would have got killed too. So John yeah. Gotti was actually adhering to uh, Paul Ooh. Castellano's edict of no, you know, no dealing drugs. Mm, but his people wasn't his people were his uh his best friend quack quack uh and uh his uh and his brother i won't say peter Gotti. Do a quack quack the... but i'm yeah, sure the real, reason why material. he went and knocked off the boss as opposed to his people is because there was his people but also it was bringing in a lot more money than the other stuff you you say you don't think he would have knocked the boss off I said the reason why he went that way instead of the, his people because that's his brother, those his people, but also the drugs was bringing in more money than what the boss wanted them to do. Yeah, and John Gotti wanted to be the boss anyway. Mm-hmm. So with yeah. so that's what that was his downfall, wanting that attention. And I don't look at Jay Prince as having like a downfall or anything like that, but he certainly has been overexposed. And we live in an era yeah. where people just don't care about what you did. Like, I don't even think it's just that, huh? Like, how you gonna prove it? Prove what? You make a threat over the internet. How do you prove that without risking the litigation? Right. You get what right. I'm saying? I, I made the an- analogy earlier that it's like the boogeyman with the lights on now. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, not that, not that I, scary. Yeah, like we didn't took the mask off. No, bro, you just a, a dude with a receding headline and a and a goatee. That's how that's how that, that's how they viewing him. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you know, Slim Charles on the wire say the thing about the old days, the old, old days. Day. You feel me? Day. You laid your demonstration down back then. 
with that group of people. This a whole new crop. That's why I and said so your now reputation you, hold the most weight with the people you built it with. Yeah, exactly. That's a great point. Just this, like, uh, like when uh, when we had that when we got cut off, I, I just tell I was telling Cordell that's like Jordan coming on the court talking about yeah, what you know what I mean I, I used to do this and do that. You think um what's the name Edwards? You think Edwards want to hear that? Edwards, man, that man, man no work. <laughs> that boy <laughs> chose Steve Kerr. We don't have no Kobe. <laughs> yeah, we don't have no Kobe. <laughs> Hey, we don't he, have a Kobe, there, and he out there with all those great players. He like we ain't got no Kobe. Like I'm that dude. Yo, you know what I mean, <laughs> I ain't mad at that, bro. That's that's that that's that youthful naive potato. That's that arrogance. I, I, right, he learned. Right, right, he, right. he learned. He learned because apparently he not. Well, you know he gonna he gonna he gonna talk that talk regardless. But yeah. he can't keep losing. He can't keep no. losing. Yeah. Oh, he got to win exactly. soon, bro. Because right. exactly. Oh boy. Yeah. Because I watched the uh, Redeem Team documentary yesterday, actually, and yeah. I saw I saw the difference of how they play, how they played when Kobe came versus before he was there. Right. Like Braun and them was all joking around. They just lost the FIBA World Championships. Like they and, they, and even the coach was like, you know, LeBron, he's he's not yet that leader. We need somebody right. who's been been here. Mm-hmm. And that's when they, they called Kobe, man. Kobe. He, he showed up just different. They they were all out hanging out till like six in the morning. They come near Kobe lacing them up about to go to the gym. And they like, right. what? And then slowly but surely, everybody else started following. You know who didn't follow? Mello. And that's why I was so mad. Because I was like, see, Mello, that's why you ain't win nothing. Because that's that Brooklyn shit. <laughs> Mello was like, man, he getting up four o'clock in the morning. Man, I ain't doing it. I don't care what. I'm like, see, that's right. that's your work ethic, fam. Like. You can work on as many jump shots and threes and all that as you want, but if your body ain't in shape, mm-hmm. you're gonna break down when we need you to be up. Pause. Yep, yep. You know, so, so yeah, man. That that Jay Prince <laughs> thing threw me off because uh, I think he definitely mis misdirected his his frustration, and he should have definitely pulled his 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 fighter to the side and been like, "Hey, man, that that's not really for you to be doing." Yeah, and bro, me. like, I found it wild that everybody had something to say about Shakur Stevenson being boring, bro. I never thought. And they took Umbrex went. I yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think he's boring. I think he's defensive. I like boxing enough to appreciate that. Right. Exactly. You get what I'm saying, like, bro, his defensive prowess is ridiculous. Well, Tank said and, it's not really defense. Tank was like, he would because, say that though. But it's also Roy Jones saying the same thing. He's like, you jumping back too much. That's not yeah, really like your too, defense. Too far, too far, you're taking man. yourself out of range. Like defense mm-hmm. is be able to stay in pocket like Floyd does. It, like when you look at Floyd defense, his feet, his feet don't push him all the way back. It's his upper body, and he goes into the Philly shell, and then and then he comes back. Tank does the same mm-hmm. thing. Shakur is is so afraid to get hit it might be that or he don't want to lose right because i think sometimes psychologically you don't want to lose that that undefeated record right mm-hmm. yeah so we're, we're just, Floyd changed that yeah 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 now everybody want to be 38 no 50 you know and that, <laughs> yeah, that that's right. like yeah. on, like ali is the greatest he he. But that, i will be honest that's messing the money up though what the undefeated shit? yeah oh yeah Cause, because they're not fighting right nobody's like, right so like, think about it. Okay, everybody's protecting the O because they trying to make their way to a great big fight, right? Mm-hmm. But if everybody was fighting each other and we got to see these styles in their prime go- matching up against each other, that builds other fights. Because now you're looking at it like, let's just take the the, the, the 135 division and we're going to uh, just group the guys who were at 135 who at 140 now, right? Mm-hmm. Ryan Garcia, Teofimo Lopez, uh, Lomachenko, Tank, Shakur, Devin Haney, right? That's six top fighters of this generation. Mm-hmm. Okay? Win, lose, or draw. You put them and match them up against each other. People will pay to see that. Yes. Because just yes. because Ryan beat Devin, that don't mean he going to beat Tank. Just because Tank beat Ryan don't mean he going to beat Shakur. You get what I'm saying? Tank fight and when Lomo, I'm right? Yeah, Tank going to fight Loma. Okay. I got Tank Loma old. See, this is the thing. When I grew up, when I was, my father had me watching boxing, you was able to see a Hagler Hearns 
twice. Yeah. Right. Right. You ever seen no. Ray? You like mm-hmm. Ray Leonard? They only fought Ooh. once. Okay, Hagler no. fought who no. twice? Ray Leonard fought about Sh- Sugar Ray and uh and Hearns. Sugar Ray and Hearns okay. fought. Okay, Hearns fought, fought Hearns. three times. They fought three times. They, they fought three times. You think about the Roberto Duran, right. right? Like like how they like they wasn't afraid to get in there with the toughest people. Right. 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 Yeah, so I think that that's that's the Shakur tactic. I think that's why he fights the way he fights cuz he doesn't want to lose that that undefeated record. But in order for him to get to that level of money, he going to have to he going to have to get hit. I'm going to be real with you though, bro. Be real with you cuz it's deeper than that, right? Bob Arum does not do well with black American fighters. Mm. Bob Arum has ter- had Terrence Crawford. The same problem he having with Shakur, he had with Terrence Crawford. Yeah, they fight style two different. They fight two different styles. Yes, that's facts, right? Terrence Crawford couldn't get the big fights because people didn't want to do business with Bob Arum. That's really what happened. And if okay. I'm on the PBC side of things, right? PBC is Premier Boxing Champions. And I got all of the belts except that one in my organization, then I have leverage. Okay. You get what I'm okay. saying? And if I'm trying to do business with, with leverage, that's why I start moving my fighters and just having them fight each other instead of making the Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford fight before I have Errol Spence get all of these belts that's inside the PBC organization. You okay. get what I'm saying? So when they start talking that on the, my side of the street shit, if Terrence Crawford is the outlier and he's the one, the only one that's with Bob, Bob Arum, of course he's going to complain about the other side of the street because they freezing him out, but they're not freezing him out because they're scared of him. They're not freezing him out because well, because he's Terrence Crawford and they don't like him. They freezing him out because they don't want to do business with Bob Arum. And that's the same thing happening at 135 and 130 to Shakur. That's why he can't get the fights with Tank. That's why he can't get the fights with Devin. So these promoters are protecting the belts, what you saying? Yes. Yes. Mm. Because those belts represent money for them. Wow. And mm. an and opportunity for them. So this was the plan, right? Remember, uh, Devin Haney beat Lomachenko, right? Mm-hmm. He had to sign a contract with Bob Arum to get that fight, right? Remember, George Cambosis, who... Uh, Devin Haney took the uh, who who he unified against was uh, is a top ranked fighter, which is Bob Arum, right? He had to in order to get to, for him to have the chance to unify and uh, to be undisputed at one thirty five, he had to sign a contract for three fights, right? First fight was to uh, go fight uh, George Cambosis in Australia. He did that in one, right? Second fight, normally, if I'm the champ, I'm the undisputed champ. Normally, I should be able to determine where this fight is fought, right? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I don't sign the contract. I got to fight. I got to do a rematch with George Cambosis in Australia. Oh, wow. Uh... Bob Aaron, bro. Hoping that I don't win because he know if I win. After my contract done, I'm out of there, right? So I win that rematch. Now I'm about to go fight Lomachenko. This is a legacy fight now. And I'm defending my titles against Lomachenko. Right? So now I fight Lomachenko and I narrowly beat him. Now I'm done with my contract with Bob Aaron. The goal was for Lomachenko to beat Devin Haney, take all the belts, right? Mm-hmm. And then to match Lomachenko, his 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 uh, aging, on the way out champion against Shakur, the up and coming champion. That's what Bob Aaron was trying to do. And those are both his to, fighters. To keep the belts. Loma, That's crazy, bro. Bob Aaron, he always signed Eastern European fighters or Mexican fighters. That's who he, he does Muhammad, well. Yeah, Muhammad Ali back in the day. Back in the day, that's when he was first starting out, though. Okay. I'm surprised he's still alive. I thought he's like 100 years old. And he old as hell. And damn, and he was senile. old back then. 
Nah, but to your point, bro, when you say, um, when you talk about uh, Shakur's style not being defensive, I can see what you're saying in regards to that because uh, you, you're not in a position to, 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 to hit, but I don't think it's fear of getting hit. It's more he fights with an amateur style. And as mm. amateur style is not based around power, it's based around points. Points, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think uh, there are small things that he could do to kind of like add to his power. Like how he turn his hand when he punch. It's small things that I think he might need to bring in a different trainer other than his grandfather. Oh, is that who's I training think? him? Mm-hmm. Wally Moses. Okay. Yeah, Roy, Roy said he wanted to train him. I, I'd like to see that. I would like to see that. You know who else no, I would yeah. like to see get a chance to train somebody? Antonio Tarver. Oh man, Tarver. He's been doing Tarver. this this podcast called Tarver's Takes, and he was never one of my favorite fighters, but he ain't been wrong about a fight yet. Mm -hmm. He ain't been wrong about a fight since he started that Tarver Takes. I don't think Roy Jones could really teach. Well, I'm assuming. I don't think he could teach him about defense because Roy Jones' defense was based on his athleticism. Yes. Like his his defense wasn't that stellar, right? Right. When he right, you know, his offense was his best defense when you think about it. So I don't know what he can give him other than what that little trick he was talking about, staying in pocket. Because Roy Jones did stay mm -hmm. in pocket a lot, but he was so much faster than, than yeah, the people. bro. Twitch re twitch uh reflexes. Yeah, yeah. Shakur, I don't I don't find it. And, and Roy Jones got away the same way. It's just that he was able to cover so much ground because of that athleticism. Because when he avoided punches, punches, he he leaned way back as well. But he mm -hmm. had a, and a that's body lead. composition too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. Yeah. Go ahead. Roy had very long arms for his his yep. uh his yeah. weight class. Yep, yep. I think his most impressive fight is when he bought he fought John Ruiz. I think that was really impressed Roy? me because. When he fought John Ruiz, because because he went up the heavyweight, because like, he went up the heavyweight, and he really showed how to fight a bigger guy being smaller than somebody, and I, I just thought that was impressive how he handled mm -hmm. himself. Now, of course, when he dropped that weight, that wasn't a good thing. Yeah, he was never the same. Yep, that was it. Was over after that. Yeah, he was never the same. Him. You know, when you bought up uh, the fight where he was talking about Shakur was stepping too far back out of range. That was the mm -hmm. fight uh, before. Uh, that was the Constantine fight, and uh, what was the dude who looked like Ghost from uh, Power? Uh, De Los Santos, I think his name is. Oh, he fought that. him. That's the fight before the one that he just just had. The fight he just had, he stayed in pocket, mm. but he still wasn't turning his punches because he just punched straight, right? Yeah, but he like I and that I'm hearing that he actually had brittle hands like Floyd did too. Mm. Oh, so he's protecting that joint. So, so he 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 got to um he got to work on points. Because he yeah, and it's, the he's not thing thing right. it's the same thing Floyd had. It's the same thing Floyd broke his hands every fight, bro. Oh wow, that's what people don't know. So when they talk about him running and being boring, what they don't know is prior to the Oscar De La Hoya fight. He had a high knockout ratio. Okay. So he went ahead and he was breaking. You sure he's breaking his hand? Maybe fracturing it? Like yeah, he, uh, fracturing. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. I'm just like, damn. But when you think about how many bones is in your hands and you, yes. you know what I'm saying? Think about it, bro. He's been fighting since he was eight. Of course, there's damage to his hand. Yeah, true indeed. I don't even know how pimps do it, right? Like the level of... <laughs> Some of these hoes jaws is hard. Yeah. I mean, how else would they be able to, you know? <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> Brother Pivot was amazing, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> had to, had to. <laughs> <laughs> Like yo, like yo, we ain't, we ain't laughed that much this episode, man. I got to. I know, bro. <laughs> Son, it was real serious. The beginning was so heavy, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was heavy, dog. We got. Boy. On a lighter note, 
<laughs> what a lie, no, these pimps. Like they just <laughs> I mean, hands ain't break yet. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. I, I'm very interested in seeing if Shakur Stevenson um make any adjustments. Uh Jay Prince putting out the ESPN fight numbers was kind of lame. I was like, dude, that, that's Bro, that was wild. <laughs> Apples and oranges, though. Like that's a free fight, bro. Like, ain't nobody, don't count. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody paying for that, right? Like, but like it I was, think too many fights is is pay per view now, bro. Like, yo, outside of Tank Day, uh, yeah. nobody should be pay per view right now, though. Nobody. <laughs> I, I agree Dang with that. Crawford, it's a, it's Terrence it's Crawford, a, yeah, he earned that. <laughs> yeah, Terrence Crawford, because yeah, we tuning in, but bro. Nobody else, though. Not even Ryan and Devin, bro. There I'm was a sorry. time when boxing always was like on Sports Channel. You could catch a boxing match at any time. But on when ESPN on stepped out yeah. of, and when ES, remember HBO left boxing, Showtime left boxing, and now yeah. ESPN is leaving boxing. Oh, so really? So that's just, why we got. That's why we paying for all of these fights. Damn, I didn't know ESPN was leaving boxing. So yeah, what's, what's the alternative? Like uh, Amazon or something? Apps, uh, apps, and that's that that screws the public, bro. Because like you can't even build a fighter. But that's you know what I'm saying. It's not even just that they're not fighting each other. You got to think about it. Um, the money that those fights is ge- generating is not warranting uh, networks to pick them up, nor is it warranting. Pe- uh, pay-per-view buyers. So where's mm-hmm. the money coming from? I thought they were making That's why MMA is just growing the way it is, man. Like, everybody's tuning into MMA. Man. I don't like... Uh, I don't like how Dana White pay his fighters, but you gotta admit, bro. Oh, yeah, everybody they, fighting not, everybody. They're not, they not making they're, money over Man, hell no. Nah. They ain't making no paper. So you, you, Hell can, nah, you bro. can lose a whole damn leg and you ain't getting paid for that joint. That's bro, crazy. Conor McGregor <laughs> took that took that parachute with that Floyd Mayweather fight, bro. Yeah. He yep. didn't care whether he won or lost that fight, dog. He got like 30? What he got? Crazy like that, yeah. Yeah. Now he got a, like a whole liquor brand and all of that. He's like, man, bro. whatever. You I ever know right how big that. his head is, bro? Yo, son. Like, and he's not a tall dude, so for his head to be that big. No, like, bro, oh, like, oh, dang, bro, how would... Pause, pause, pause. Pause, yeah, wow. pause man. <laughs> Stop it, man. Hey, y'all he just going back up. and forth like... <laughs> he said, like, like, you we said, the regular you stuff. You, like, like, you sitting there watching it like, yo, they... they I'm like, yo, <laughs> yo, how I saw I got away with it and just dove in the deep end, huh? Yo, you out of control, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford another one of those, man. <laughs> no, bro. Like I'm telling you, you, you got your shit for the year. Yeah, that was that was reckless, son. I gotta make sure I promote that video. That's a good one to promote. Yes. Um, <laughs> Hilarious. But yeah, I, I don't watch MMA honestly as much as I like to think I would like to because I just don't like the brutality of it. I don't. I just don't. I just don't like that part of it. I I like I like submissions i like you know a knockout but when they when they fall and then you banging them on the head like with their hands and stuff pause like i just i just i can't get with that bro i can't yo b go stop (laughs) 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 niggas be on the ground looking like a rubber chicken bro Yo, it's the worst. Son. Like, and the ref, you know, he knocked out. Like, as soon as he hit the mat, like, just hit. right, just. But the the, 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 the fight is, is like they're programmed. Like, they gotta go there and hit him like three times just to make right. sure he down. It's like that's why getting in a real fight outside is like because people Yo. be thinking they MMA fighters. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and and somebody hit you while you already down and knocked out, Bro, and you find out crazy. about it, like. You yeah, it's over. Yeah, yeah. You could do a lot of a lot of concussive damage. Yeah, but but that comeback gonna be scary because ain't nobody coming back to fight behind that. Nah, no. Like, Yo, uh, I think only five. What y'all think of uh, what y'all think of Clarissa Shield? You said when they break their neck, would you say they, they legs, man? Like oh oh yes yeah. oh yeah. Foot twist the other oh, way. Yeah. Like, oh my god! I saw uh, crazy. Yo, she, she, I saw yeah, Silver break his leg like that. 
Clarissa Ooh. Shields. You feel Silver, he broke his leg like that. Oh shit. Yeah. He killed he 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 kicked somebody and broke his he own broke leg. His leg. Yeah. You say but, you um, feel like Shields talk too much? She talk too damn much, man. Yeah, man. She but, ain't got nobody yeah. to fight. Yo. That's what it is. And she gotta promote herself. Like this yeah. would this where the double standard come in, right? Floyd Mayweather employed the same tactic as Clarissa Shields. But she gets a lot of flack for being the way he was to build his brand. She's doing the same thing, right? Yeah, but Floyd talked, he, he talked on that, on the um, about flashy shit. She just talking about, she want to fight dudes. He just like, yeah, no, I can't beat like. It's all marketing shit. though. It's all yeah. marketing. Yeah. It's all marketing, know. bro. Like, I don't she is, her. man, bro, we are witnessing an amazing run with her, bro. She, she is think absolutely she, like that. She surpassed Layla Ali. As far as what? Just Entertainment her, value? Her impact. Impact, unfortunately, no, but the reason being, no, it's two reasons. Uh, her name is Ali, and she had knockout power. Mm. That's the only reason. As far as boxing skills, Clarissa box circles around Layla Ali. I watched Clarissa Shields fight this 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 girl, and she don't want to fight her again. She she's kind of she's kind of she kind of running from. Uh, it's this it's this black girl. She's she's almost like Latino or something. She she don't she fought her and it wasn't no cakewalk. And she mm. it's like she don't want to fight her no more. And the girl keep calling her out. I forget her name. And I what weight her. was it though? Oh, I don't know, man. I don't. Know. That matters, and I'm gonna tell you why. It with Clarissa going up like her next fight, she's going all the way up to heavyweight. So she not you already that like. No, she was at Clarissa's. Natural fighting weight is 168, I think. But she's won titles at 54, 47, 60, 68, 75, and now she's going to heavyweight. Damn, Damn. who's in the heavyweight division? Yeah, you sound like Mike Epps in that movie, but he was asked for the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> ticket. I think I had like $90. <laughs> I'm trying to pull it up. <laughs> pull it up. <laughs> oh, she uh, she's ducking with this girl. No, she about to fight. Who the? But what what about what about when the white dude dropped in the sparring? So I was talking about she could beat dudes, could beat this one. She been trying to go at um, oh boy man. Um, I don't like how they how they put out sparring tapes now though. That shit corny. And the reason I'm saying that, bro. Because especially when you're the fighter who is in training camp, you Hannah can be bringing Gabriel. a sparring. She Hannah beat Gabriel. the brakes off Hannah Great Gabriel. Nah, no, she didn't. That was close, son. I don't Bro, recall that wasn't no close break. fight. I watched that. I watched Hannah that Gables fight. dropped her in the first round, but she beat the brakes off of her for the rest of that fight. And Hannah Gables fine as hell, too. She is, so maybe I'm biased. But anyway. Yeah, I know you're I mean, biased. I had to point that out, Haas. You, you out of space, bro. I know you. I'm going to wa watch that fight again. I'm gonna watch it again. Yeah, uh, Hannah Gables ain't have enough hand speed for uh, Clarissa, bro. Um, uh, uh, I remember, I, I remember that fight because she dropped Clarissa in the first round. She caught her with a flash knockdown. Well, Hannah Gabriel's like ten years older than her, so I don't know if that mm -hmm. ain't ever happened again. She's a little. But she's that, a little... Look at the business of boxing, though, my nigga. You feel me? You think that could happen? Everybody, again? why wouldn't you call Clarissa Shields out? She's the only draw. Yeah, yeah. You get what she I'm saying? Be. Like, she, yeah, she first Hannah Gables won a payday, and she knows she can't beat no Clarissa Shields. Bro. She can't. She can't beat her, bro. She don't have enough hand speed. So who 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 can she fight? That's scary. This another lady that. It was a it was another uh fighter who they said Layla Ali was ducking and yeah. and, Wolf. and and Wolf. Man, Wolf was a beast, bro. bro. Oh my god! <laughs> I would not. I would not yo, fight Ann Wolf, bro. Yo, Ali was running from her, yo. <laughs> she running from her, no. And Wolf, a prison, a, a prison prison fighter. Yo, 
<laughs> Bro, she, she was training girl. dudes. Yeah. Oh. She used to yeah. train James Kirkland. Yeah, yeah, she did. Oh yep. wow. She did. So so with all of this women's sports and, and the the I guess the emergence of the WNBA now, they about supposedly they're supposed to sign like a two point two billion dollar deal, media deal. Mm. I think I that's love it. Dope. That can nice. be uh an increase in in of course salary for them. Mm. Uh Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark is, is kind of the driving forces behind Yo, that. So, ha. You know what? We need to dedicate a whole episode to women's sports. To Angel Reese, you said? To That's what's up. Her too. Yeah, hot, 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 <laughs> her too. Yo, hot, hot, you, hot, you know, I, he, he saw those recent uh, photos of the neck. <laughs> hey, yes. Angel, Angel, Angel Wilson, nice too, though. Yo, she Kate, nice. Uh, Yo, yeah. she nice. Angel, yeah, we need to. We, not, bro, we, we got to. Asia, we got to do some love to the, to the she's, ladies, she's, bro. Like, she's yeah, unstoppable, bro. She's unstoppable. She is, bro. She's nice with it, bro. That's, so the, play, that's the MVP this year. Yeah, I they like that They won two in a row, right? They're going for Who the repeat this year. The Aces. Yeah. Oh, yep. shoot. I didn't know that. They might do what the Comets did back in the day. Mm. Four in a row? The mm-hmm. Comets won four straight. But it really wasn't that much competition like that. Like it, Not like it's getting to be now. I mean, they had the Liberty, dog. Like, Liberty was some competition. That was it, though. Now was now was definitely is definitely up there. I like that. I like I like that the WNBA is being spoken about because I love it. It, was, it was a time where it was just like, yo, why the little girls going out their way to have LeBron James jerseys and LeBron James sneakers? Like these kids, like now they got yeah. Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, they got Asia Wilson, they got and Angel Reese got swag, bro. She do, son. Like they waiting, swag, they waiting at yo, the uh, yo, the, yo. Every time you say Angel Reese. This dude, yo, look at his smile. He's he look, hey, he up there smiling like Dinka on <laughs> barbershop, bro. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> nah, nah, son, like she, she, she caked up, like she dope. Yeah, right? buddy. Uh, she about what, like five, yeah, 11, five, ten, six feet he tall. Yeah, he tall. Yeah, but she look like a, she look like a cute earthworm in the face, though. So you stupid. She look like like glower. <laughs> <laughs> she she looked like a gummy worm in the face, but she cute. You know, you know I'm talking about her. She was at the she was at the <laughs> uh the, the game with Jalen Brown and his girl. Yeah. I saw him and his girl. Her and his girl was holding hands, walking out the out the out the game. Yeah, you, yeah I, went, I went straight to the comments. How are you doing? Say he, in there. <laughs> he said, "I'm the MVP for a lot of reasons." Right. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick before we go, he he mentioned LeBron James son not being uh, a pro, and they kind of read his. Oh, he like, did. Yeah, like he was at the game watching him, and he's like, "No, nah, he's not a pro yet." But he didn't say it to anybody. He was, it was just in conversation right. with the people about him, and people made a. Big he wasn't deal being malicious that. either. No, he just was like he's not a pro yet. Ever since that day, Bronny dropped twelve points, and then he dropped thirteen points. So, I'm seeing maybe he's getting comfortable. But I'm also seeing like he still he needs some more dog in him. You know, he he's 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 mm-hmm. he's it's that 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 privileged kid thing is still kind of looming over him because he never had to really fight. Right. Well, he in the deep end of the pool now. Yeah. That, that Bryce boy. Yo. He got that dog in him, yo. You would have yeah. thought he grew up I, in Akron. Right, like, yo, right. Dog, like, <laughs> he acting like he, he got the project gene. He, he got, got the, the project, project gene. gene. He got the project gene. <laughs> LeBron hair wasn't cut. It's just uh, but you know what it. though, when you think about it, bro, a lot of times when you grow up in the shadow of your older sibling, and your older sibling been having the light on them, yeah. you get to develop that toughness and that fight behind the scenes. You and feel me? I LeBron, think we just yeah. seen that play out. And Bronny is the junior, so it, it really it highlights that. Yo, I, yep. I think if you can separate the two and say, okay, uh, Bryce definitely got, I grew up in the projects, LeBron jeans, and Bronny got, we've arrived. Miami LeBron, LeBron jeans. LeBron, Miami, Miami LeBron jeans. jeans. Yeah, okay, yeah. Sure. Y'all want me to go practice when? Like, what you talking about? <laughs> I'm on the beach. I'm on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, man. So yeah, man. I, I think that's the difference between them two. I'm, I'm, I'm really eager to see if they end up on the same team. Mm-hmm. Bryce and Brian. Yeah, that'll be ill. That'll be dope. They gonna find a way to orchestrate that. You they got to. <laughs> I think that'll be like the biggest thing. Then it's like, yo, he got a dog with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, buddy. The live's oh. gonna be ridiculous. Oh man. That'd you know what crazy. that's like? That's like how like me and my brother could talk in harmony. Really? That's just understand, man, bro. Me and our harmony when we sing together is ridiculous good. He put that video out, yeah. Yeah, go go. To, I'm gonna send you the link. Why you? Why I'm gonna send you the link. I got that face, bro. He he definitely putting on for the big fellas, bro. The full figure fellas. Yo, I, I kept looking. I was like, oh lord. But you know what's so ill when I see your brother? You know, shout out to Jay Henry live. Uh, I'm trying to see your face in his face when I be looking. I'm like, okay, he got, too, he, he got too much face meat busting out of his beard. <laughs> what? <laughs> face meat? What? <laughs> Pause. <laughs> he said his brother got face meat, son. Busting out of his beard. Yo. Busting out of his beard. <laughs> what? Yo, you Yo. flagrant. <laughs> Yo, bro. Nah, hey, I joke with my brother because, like, bro, trust me, trust him. No, my brother, he go hard when it comes to cracking on people, bro. And Yo, he don't, he don't take no shots. He deadly with it. Like, yeah, you got to send me the link. Cause I was like, what he what he doing it? I saw because they was in the studio and the studio had like this That's, virtual yeah. like fireplace and stuff. I'm like, oh no, that was bro. a real fireplace. That was a real fireplace. It looked like yeah. it looked like a TV with fire on it. No, nah, bro, that's that's a it might have been, I don't know. <laughs> now that I think about it, that might have been a TV with a fireplace. It's <laughs> like, why you got a fireplace in the studio? Right, 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 like, right. Like it's not, and, and, and you got the army jacket on, bro. It's July. Why the fireplace on? You went straight in the cabin. No, that's a real fireplace. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Nah, bro. But, uh, uh, oh, hey, you, you, hey, that boy Pimp C said the TV don't have no temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my fur coat. <laughs> right. The TV don't have no temperature. And Gloria, you put one on too. We about to do this video. Right. Yeah, but uh, uh, man, shout out to Jay, bro, because uh, I saw, I've seen the, the video he's about to put out right now is for his single, Come See Me. Um, uh, I, I think that's when I helped him, right? I can't remember. He got a bunch of songs. Um, Are you but in this the video? Come See Me record. I, oh, no. Uh-uh. Nah, I'm not famous enough to be in a Jay Henry video, bro. He ain't let you know. That's what I'm <laughs> He told you. Yo, bro, I got this, bro. I got this, bro. Yo, you ain't even see him in the Country Wayne skits, though, did you? Nah, I didn't see that yet. Man, yeah, that boy been in this country range. Man, one thing I'm gonna and I'm gonna give this nigga his flowers, bro. I don't know nobody that moved with the confidence this boy moved with, bro. Yeah. When he get an idea in his head, he's going to act on it, bro. And he don't care what you think. You could try to give him the perspective on it. Oh, hey, bro, I wouldn't do that shit. He would do it. He will do it. <laughs> and you know, like move, he moved with supreme confidence, though, bro. I, and you know, I was I honor that and I respect that. I'm a bit of more of an overthinker than he is, bro. But I definitely just want a, a, a just a, a, a ounce of that supreme confidence that nigga got, bro. Because if I can get that, boy, it's gonna be a problem. But nah, shout out to Jay, man. This the single is "Come See Me." He's releasing the the in studio video first, and then he's gonna release the actual official music video. Oh, so he got an in-studio video. Yeah, that's what that one is that he's been promoting. Gotcha. Okay. And it actually released Wednesday. Oh, really? All mm-hmm. right, so it's out. I, once I saw the promotion, I was like, okay, it, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't come out yet. I'll wait for it. But then I ain't seen no, nothing about it. I was like, all right. So, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I said Wednesday. I, I meant this week. This week coming up. Yeah. Oh, uh, so it's not out. Not uh, the 
Biko, like he be capping. Like first is a real fire place. Then the video, you know, I, like <laughs> yo son, like yeah, what's going on with you? Talk to me, brother. Like what's happening? <laughs> I'm supporting my brother, bro. We twins. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, you used to be twins. They used to be twins. They used to be twins. <laughs> they been twins. You twins like 150 <laughs> pounds ago. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Better be able to take the clap back because I'm telling you, he, he coming. Listen, man. Ain't I, I'm nobody. just saying, bro. Listen, bro, you know I got it. I got the big. And I'm telling you, I'm about to throw gas on the fire too because he I'm coming. Gas on the fire. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I was, looking, I was trying to find Cardell's face in your face. He said, you got too much face meat. <laughs> Pulsing out your beard. <laughs> he said, he said your face <laughs> meat is bumping out your beard. <laughs> That's what <it> <laughs> He said, oh, what shit. beard does that? Like, what you talking about? <laughs> bro, he actually have a song called Teddy Bear, bro. I believe you. Velvet Teddy No, man. I'm... I'm I'm dead serious, bro. I hate the song, but he loves it. No, I'm being honest, bro. Like I, I feel like it's too on the nose, but it's too on the nose for me. I like to be a little bit more clever, and 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 you know. But it work. It certain thing. I, I'm learning that just because something won't work for me and how I brand myself don't mean that it won't work. So when right. I say I don't like something, that don't mean that it's not good. Right, yeah, he um, did. but he, but he running with that teddy bear thing, bro. Oh man, that's what's up. So he's like, build a bear, <laughs> build a bear, teddy bear. <laughs> Hi, I'm telling you, he coming for you, bro. <laughs> this gonna be, you know what? <laughs> we finna, bro. We finna, we finna go viral. <laughs> we finna go viral. But I know y'all, neither one of y'all gonna stop. So, no. yes. No. <laughs> yeah, bro, I'm finna throw so, I'm finna, I'm Bob Arum now. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no, nah, I was messing with you, bro, but he just made me laugh because everything, like, ever since you told me how he is, when I see him and stuff, I just laugh because I can see it. I can see it. And it's just like, when you told me that he think every chick is trying to holler at him, she want me, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, dog, supreme confidence, bro. And nothing you say finna shake it. Like nothing. nothing. I'm I love it. Bro. I love it. Now, now I got to make sure I go check the video out. I'm going to make sure uh, I send, it, send you the link. Yeah, shoot that to me, brother. All right, man. This was we gonna have to uh, we probably do this in like two parts. This is a yeah one of those long episodes, yeah, but it's all good. One. And you're right; it got heavy real quick. So like, <laughs> it got heavy. <laughs> like, yo, what are we talking about? Like, yo, we we, we had no laughing, nothing going on. Right? Yo, it was like, <laughs> oh snap! Like, we really in pocket with this right here. That's that's bro. We was a Shakur Stevenson fight at first. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, just boring, <laughs> just, just, just throwing punches. <laughs> Don't let your hands go. <laughs> right. <laughs> we land the plane, though. We land the plane. Heck yeah, man. I wish that brother success. I wish Jay no doubt, success. Bro. I hope he, he leave Mason them alone because they funny. You don't want to play with yeah, funny right. people. Yeah, right. With a platform? Funny right. and with platform. a platform? We're not your little niggas. Like, what are you? I know, Brian Mason, that Mace up there looking like a, a, a jug of milk, bro. Oh. Killing him. <laughs> he got the kingpin <laughs> suit on, killing him. We're not, yeah, he, we're not he was supposed home. to be losing weight, but he he, he didn't he look like he no, bro. He finding that weight, bro. He ain't losing nothing. That nigga is nah, finding the weight. <laughs> Oh, it's wait over there. That's why I, I, I never respect this street niggas. That's why I'm always in trouble with them. Yo, you said always wait over there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get that. That's wait. Oh, Yo, man, I just hope everybody just. I wish everybody success, man. We gonna have great success as we continue to knock these out. Uh, yep. any, any 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 parting words? Man, look, thank y'all for being on the trial run with us. Shout out to all the trial runners out there. 
Um, we just we just getting warmed up. Yes. Just starting. I don't want to say nothing flagrant, so let's <laughs> get it. <laughs> Yo, you really think about what you got? <laughs> yeah, I was, bro. <laughs> You man, y'all, y'all, y'all be blessed, it was about man. To get Thank so y'all for bad, laughing bro. with us, man. Yeah. Thank y'all for laughing with us, man. It's been Absolutely. a pleasure. We're going to continue you. to grow. <laughs>